Today, I'll share a few tips on how to send cold emails to professors for your master's and PhD degrees. The next question some of you will ask yourself is, why don't I just use my own money? What if I have my own money to sponsor myself for my research? Hi family, welcome to my YouTube channel Ada Canada. My name is Nikki and on this channel I talk about all things related to studying in Canada as an international student, scholarships, immigration and a sprinkle of lifestyle here and there. So if you're new or a returning subscriber, welcome. Stick around to the end. Today I'll share a few tips on how to send cold emails to professors for your master's and PhD degrees. This video is specifically for potential international students but if you're watching me from within Canada, this might also apply to you. If you are applying for a course-based master's program, which is a master's program that is entirely taught in class with no thesis component, this video is not for you. You don't need to contact any research supervisor before you apply for admission. However, if you are applying for a research-based master's program or a PhD program, grab a seat, grab your pen and paper, come and sit down in the front row and hear me out. So let's say you are interested in applying for a graduate degree, but you prefer research, you prefer a thesis based or a research based master's degree or even a PhD. You want to be fully funded while doing a research based master's. Maybe you've previously sent an email and you either got no response or they told you that they are currently not taking any research students because they do not have funding available yet. If the professor tells you that they don't have funding to take you as a research student, that's a different case. There's nothing much you can do in this case because research is dependent on funding. If the professor cannot secure funding, it means they cannot fund your research or they cannot pay you to do your research. So they won't take you on as a research student. However, there are other reasons why your request for a research supervisor might be rejected or no response given. I want to talk about how you can try again and make yourself stand out. Step one, what is my area of research interest and why? This is a question that only you can answer for yourself. What particular research area are you interested in within your chosen field in your program of interest? What are the issues or challenges or problems that require solutions? One important thing to note is that when you're trying to choose a research area, choose an area where there's an active problem or a challenge. This is what propels you to seek out solutions. Remember, when you're conducting academic research, first, you have to identify a problem. Then you have to understand the background of that problem and why the problem came to be in the first place. Then understand what other researchers have done or contributed as solutions. Then you conduct your own independent research and come up with proposed solutions. This is really very important. This first step or first tip is crucial to locating the right research supervisor. When you figure this step out, then move to step two. Step two is to know your potential research supervisor of interest. In this step, you don't send any emails to anyone just yet. You have homework to do. What you're gonna do in this step is you're gonna go online to the school you want to apply for admission, go to your faculty or department of interest, then look at the list of research faculty members and carefully examine their portfolio. We're going to use myself as an example. So we're going to assume that I want to do a research-based master's degree in biomedical engineering at the University of Saskatchewan. Okay, this this is what I want to do and University of Saskatchewan is where I want to study biomedical engineering as a graduate student. As a potential international student looking to do research in biomedical engineering, I want to do something with robots. So robotics is my area of focus. Alright guys, so I'm here 
at the University of Saskatchewan and this is future graduate students this is the website of the University of Saskatchewan like I said earlier I want to study a master's program or a master's degree in biomedical engineering with focus area of specialization in robotics these are the three graduate programs under the biomedical engineering department and if I scroll down I'll see more information about biomedical engineering and like what this is just general information here on this page. Um, there's two different types of masters and then there's a PhD. To locate the faculty list, all I have to do is just scroll down. You get like general information about biomedical engineering, but if I scroll down, I see research supervisors here. And the next thing I see is this box that says view faculty list. When I click on it, it takes me to, you know, the inner page within the division or the department of biomedical engineering and uh, this page is supposed to give me information about all the faculty members because i want to look at each faculty member and see what their research interest is is another thing that i want to point out here is it's nice to have a first and a second option and if possible a third option so it's nice to have a first option for your research specialization area it's nice to also have a second option, have a third option if it's possible. So for example, first option is robotics, robotic engineering. My second option could be something else, maybe in biomechanics or something, something related, right? Something within biomedical engineering. So when we scroll down, we're going to look for the faculty list. We're not going to start an application yet. Do not start an application until you have contacted a research supervisor. So it's even written somewhere here. I did see it somewhere here that before you submit an application, you have to contact a research supervisor. It's actually here. It says all of our programs require a supervisor and it is recommended that applicants secure a supervisor prior to beginning an application so do not submit an application until you have contacted a supervisor and not just contacting a supervisor the supervisor has agreed to be your research supervisor and has given you a position as a graduate research student and is willing to take you in is willing to fund your research so we're going to scroll down and just ignore this part first because that's not our priority right now as i'm scrolling i don't see anything about robot robotics yet but then like I said you know it's nice to have a second option and if you're looking at faculty members for your second option these are their specialty areas this these are the areas where they specialize in for their research a lot of papers publications journal articles that these faculty members have published will be in topics that are very similar to these research focus areas i'm going to choose this guy here because he's just about the only person that i've seen whose specialty is in robotics so this professor here with the name riza dr riza specializes in robotics dynamics and control structural dynamics these are all their specialty areas i saw someone else whose special area is in biomechanics so if I am also interested in biomechanics let's say robotics is my first specialty research area biomechanics is my second specialty research area what I'm gonna do is then I'm going to look deeper into this guy here whose specialty is in robotics this Riza guy here and I'm also going to look at this person here whose research area is in biomechanics medical imaging computational mechanics and all of those things so we're going to examine these two people you can look at more people but then it has to be within your area of interest so if I click on Riza or Dr. Riza these are his contact details I will make a note of his email address because that is the email address that I'm going to send an email to requesting for supervision for a master's program. These are his research groups, okay? He has about three different groups. He has positions available for PhD students and postdoctoral fellows. PDF is postdoctoral fellow. He doesn't have a position for master's and this is what he's looking for, okay? So if you are interested in biomedical engineering at a PhD level and this is your area of interest in robotics or any of these two options feel free to send him an email with your research background this is his biography his education and experience these are the projects that he has worked on current and past projects this is all the projects that he has worked on 
Now, unfortunately, I don't see a page that shows his publications. There are some schools where just after you see stuff like this, there'll be a space where they'll put all of their publications, or at least some of them, because some of these professors, they write like tons and tons of articles every year. In a case where you see different publications and journal articles, my best advice is go and have a look at the journal articles that this faculty member has published, okay, has written and published. Look at the journal articles that are related to your area of interest. Study it. Well, you don't necessarily have to read it like you're trying to study for an exam, but it, it would be nice to just have a look at it, to read up about it because you can then introduce it, right? Introduce it when you contact the faculty supervisor, you introduce in your email or as part of your email that I read your paper where you talked about this. For example, let's say this professor here has written a paper that has to do with dynamics and control of mobile manipulators this is something under robotics study that paper or journal article and then you can introduce it in your email when you contact the supervisor say something like you know i read this paper that you published or that you wrote and you know this is very similar to my experience assuming that you've had experience within whatever it is that he wrote in that publication. This is something you have to take your time and do, okay? You don't rush during this step. You just take your time and review any publications and journal articles that the professor has actually written. So I'm gonna go back and we're going to look at the second person that I found that was in biomechanics. There's this person who is also specializing in biomechanics, but there was someone else. I think it was this guy, James Johnston. So this person or this doctor or this professor is also a faculty member at the department. He does have a website, which we're going to check. And he has this, okay? So I'm going to check this out because I'm actually not very familiar with what it is. This is his website. This is the website for my second option. Um, my second specialty research area in biomechanics and when I click on that website This is the page that I see and here I can see all the different publications that this professor has Written, okay, it all has his name like you can see all of these publications here have JD Johnston JD Johnston JD Johnston so you see like a whole ton. This is like there's more okay there's so much more going back all the way to 2009 2008 so he's written a ton of research on that biomechanics imaging and finite element analysis he's written a ton of research this is his citation index here in this area this just shows you out of all of these publications that he has written right this is how many people who have actually cited him at least up to 2,000 people have used his publications in whatever research that they were doing. Pick a few, okay? Pick a few that have to do with biomechanics, your specialty area of interest. Pick a few of them and just kind of look through them. You don't necessarily have to study them like you're actually going to study for an exam, but it's nice to just have a general idea of what his research entails like okay what aspect of biomechanics is he on about it's nice to just have that general idea so that when you finally contact that supervisor you have something you have some substance that you can use to start up a conversation or start up a thread in the email and if he is interested or if he has a position or a spot available he might be willing to interview you so now you figured out your research area of interest you've examined the profiles of different research supervisors, you've narrowed in on one or maybe two supervisors whose research profile closely matches your area of interest. Now you can then move to the next step, which is step three. In step three, this is when you contact the supervisor. I suggest using emails rather than calling them because international call charges are expensive and the majority of these professors do not know you or anything about you. You're a stranger to them. So instead of calling their phones directly, take the formal approach by sending an email. This has happened to me when I was applying for a master's program for at a university here in Alberta, I'm not gonna call the name. I called a research faculty member and whew, 
Well, I got the shocker of my life. This is a story for another day. Moral of the story, don't do what I did. Learn from my mistake and do better. The key words in this step are to be targeted and specific. Most supervisors will simply ignore your email if it appears generic or unrelated to their particular field of study. So I have this sample template for contacting research supervisors. You can pause it to take a screenshot. Please note that this is a sample guide. Use with discretion and at your own risk. I will find a way to post this in the description of this video. There are different email formats and styles available by the way. This is what I could come up with as an example. To send a formal email, first start with a formal subject line. Always include a subject line that's related to what you're going to talk about in the body of the email. Always make sure the subject is clear, concise and directly relates to the body of the email. The first paragraph in the body of the email should be a brief introduction about you and an explanation of why you are getting into contact with the potential supervisor. The next paragraph should highlight your research interests and relevant skills. These skills should mirror the supervisor's research area. Next, in another paragraph, highlight any relevant work experience including who you have worked worked with and any manuscripts you have published. Attach your CV, ask any other questions. The top tip here is if you're bold enough, ask the supervisor if they would have time for an informal chat about their project or current research for you know, graduate students. Moving on to step four, anticipate a response from the supervisor. As long as you've done your homework well and properly, formally contacted the potential supervisor, you are now on to step four. This step is where you should anticipate a response to your email within three to five business days at least. I'll be very honest with you, even though you might have done the good work of reaching out to the potential supervisor, you may or you may not get a response. If you get a response, it will either be a yes, tell me more about your line of research or I'm happy to meet with you over a Zoom call to discuss things further or I'd like to interview you for a graduate research position. I'll recommend your name to the faculty and you can submit a formal application to the university, something like that, okay? Things with very positive language. If you get that kind of positive response, it means that there is funding available and the supervisor is willing to accept you under their wing. If you get a no or a negative response, most often the supervisor will tell you something that sounds like, no, unfortunately, I'm not accepting master's research students at this time. Or the response will sound like, no, unfortunately, I don't have funding available or the department does not have funding available for this research. Or, you know, maybe they'll say something like, I already have students that have filled the position, so I'm not looking to take any more research students. If a supervisor tells you that they don't have available funding know that this is not in any way any of your fault they are simply saying they don't have money to sponsor your research the next question some of you will ask yourself is why don't I just use my own money what if I have my own money to sponsor myself for my research the answer is no it's a hard no it doesn't work that way in Canada and if you try to argue that with the supervisor they will not even pay any attention to you step five is to submit a formal application to the university for a research based master's or PhD and indicates the supervisor's name in the application. This step is applicable if you get a positive response from the supervisor and you have been officially offered a position as a graduate research student under that supervisor. The supervisor that accepts you will present you with an offer letter that highlights your position, the research and how much stipend you will be paid amongst other details. It looks just like an offer letter of employment. The supervisor on their own own part will recommend your name to the faculty for admission. So when you submit an application for admission, you will definitely get admitted into the program as long as your name has already been submitted to the faculty as a recommendation for admission. All right, family, these are the tips or steps that I wanted to share with you regarding how to contact a research supervisor as a potential graduate student. If you watched to this point of this video, thank you so much. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, click, click, click on that subscribe button, turn on your notifications for new videos. And while you're waiting for a new video, indulge yourself in these other videos.
check them out. I will see you guys in my next video. Stay safe. Bye.